and inscribed Native American Mall from Saginaw, Michigan. When you're out on the quest to find Native American Indian artifacts, it's best to truly leave no stone unturned. The majority of artifacts out there to be found are not a beautiful arrows and spearheads or axes and celts, etc. The majority are slightly modified stones that the average collector would walk right past and see little significance in. But they do have a great significance, and the artifact I'm going to show you is just such a piece. Now, this is a very unique and heavy mall. Wikipedia defines a mall as follows. A mall refers to any number of large hammers <coughs> and uh, a type of sledgehammer, end quote. Now, as you might imagine, malls were an important part of a prehistoric toolkit and would have, been, have served many, uh, many functions, including crushing other stone. The stone mall weighs about 10 pounds and is made of a tan-colored granular, granular stone, almost like a grinding stone type of uh, material. Now this has been thought, modified in that it was ground down to a bit um, end um, which did the work. It was the weight of the, of the piece that made it highly effective. My friend Gil Alberg <clears throat> pointed it out to me in the field and asked if I thought the marks on it were plow marks. And indeed on the exposed side they were plow marks. But upon picking it up, it was uh, immediately obvious that it was a mall and that the tru truly unique feature was that on the face of the stone that was down, face down to the dirt, that face shows inscribed marks that are not plow marks. And the question is, were they somehow functional or were they of some symbolic meaning to the, uh, to the man who created and used this tool? The face of the stone is slightly obscured by uh, many centuries, possibly over a thousand years, that it had lain in the dirt and clay. The marks appear somewhat like a starburst design, which is not uncommon as a symbol in ancient Indian art of the Great Lakes region. I must caution that my assessments here are speculative on my part, as there is no way we can ever be certain of what the maker's original intent was in putting this symbol on this stone mall. So then the first question I asked myself was, could the marks be functional? The answer, a few of them perhaps, but that would be very questionable. In my opinion, none are deep enough to serve as a, a groove in which to heft the piece to a handle. Not all, mall, all malls were used on a handle. In fact, most were probably used handheld, as I believe this one was. Now the Starburst design can also be seen prominently on the Knob Cow Zoan discs found on Thunder Bay at Alpena, Michigan, about 130 miles to the north. A little bit closer, uh, similar designs can be seen on the Sanilac uh, petroglyphs in Michigan's thumb area, about 30 to 40 miles away. It is not out of the realm of possibility that those who carved the ancient petroglyphs were culturally connected to the people from the site in Saginaw where Gil and I found them all. Interestingly, these petroglyphs are dated at about 600 to 1,000 years ago, placing them firmly in what is known as the Late Woodland Era. The mall um, that I found is from that same period of time, and I base this assessment on an arrowhead found near the mall, which uh, is of a design extensively used in the Late Woodland here in Michigan, so there could very easily be some... Uh, connection between the two sites. It would uh, be truly fascinating to know what the starburst meant to these ancient people, but again, we can never know that for certain. We can only guess. Now, I would be delighted to hear any of your thoughts uh, on this piece, so please be sure to post them in the comment section, and be sure to please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for similar upcoming programs. Stay well, my friends. Thanks for watching. And God bless.